Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I'd like to share a little magic with you. This magic is a game from round 18 of the Chinese Chess League 2017. It was just played November 4th. Who was playing? On the white end, Grandmaster Bai Tin Shi. On the black end, Grandmaster Ding Lirin. Now, after reviewing this game, I'm convinced Ding Lirin did not sit down at the board as a Grandmaster but rather as some wizard. Okay, this is, in my opinion, chess art of the first order. Uh, that list, greatest chess games of all time, does it belong there? Well, I'll leave that up to you. See what you think. Okay, feel free to share your opinions in the comment section below. Let's have a look. Bai Tin Shi opens with d4. Wizard, Ding Lirin, replying with knight f6. What opening? We have a Nimzo Indian defense. Three knights variation. The king is tucked away. A pin is present. Pawn duos are strong. The C pawn has something to say about that. E3, chop, chop. What will the queen do? She takes a step back. Will the pin be broken? No. D5, why? The king is safe. Black king is safe. He's still two moves out. If he wants to go king's side, let's open lines. Try to get at the king. Rook to d1 is sensible enough. This is, after all, a half-open file. If there's a negative connected with this move, it's uh, related to maybe placing too heavy an emphasis on uh, queenside deployment. Continuing. This pin is now broken. The cost connected with that, this is a very weakening move. He is now free, and so pounces on this guy. He is pinned. It's unpinned somewhat with knight to d2. And now move 12. I like this move. Knight c5. Hitting the queen. Saying, my knight is better than yours. She's flushed back yet another rank. And in comes now d4. There is no exchange just yet. Knight f3. A pin is here. e5. Forward. Knight takes e5. Pawn takes knight. Okay, we're right about the halfway point in the game. Black has just given up their queen. What to do? We take the rook on d8. Not yet. In the game... Pawn takes pawn, uh, that's a check. In this pawn, his power should not be underestimated. He's one step away from touchdown land. New queen, right around the corner. This captures white's attention, so much so that he decides on moving the king to e2 at this point to ensure this pawn is tracked down in short order. The best move in this position is to drop back to d2. What may follow, what would be likely to follow, is a piling up on the rook. And if he is defended, this idea to take out the defender of d2, and white has many problems still to solve. Defense of both the d2 square and this pawn, a moment away from queening. In the game, it was king to e2. And after rook takes rook, this dangerous pawn is taken out. But this is where black now pounces. There really isn't, uh, white really is not given a moment to breathe. Knight a4, striking at the queen. Knight c3 with check. He's bolting. King f3. And now another star move of the game. Rook to d4. Okay. Pawn takes rook. Knight takes with the fork. What's the threat with this move? Well, it's guarding these fourth rank squares. The idea. Check. And then checkmate. This guy's here to defend g4. Black insists with h5. And at this point, white needs a new square. Decides on bishop to h2. The king's ready to run. g4 is in. King g3. 
And another star move. Another rook move. Rook to d2. Queen takes rook, knight e4. Another fork would be present. What's the idea? It's to flush the queen away from e4. With this last move, black now controls every square along this diagonal. So, after queen b3, black makes use of e4 with check. King h4. Bishop e7. It's a king hunt. King takes pawn. King g7. Why this move? Well, it's taking away some squares from the king. And black is just two steps away from getting the final piece involved. This guy here in the corner. A bishop move and a rook check and then checkmate. Let's see. Bishop f4 is black in time. Bishop f5 white for the moment is able to insert a check. King h7. Queen takes b7 and rook takes f2. That's not just going pawn hunting. Notice the significance. Notice the role that that pawn had in the position. Defensive g3. This is now a mate threat. There are no safe squares for the king besides the one he rests on. Continuing, bishop g5. And now it's a mate in 7. Rook to h8. Preparing to move the king with a discovered check, followed up with rook takes bishop and mate. So what is tried is knight takes f7, bishop g6, king takes pawn, and the final move of the game, knight to e5 check, and white resigns. What a picturesque finish we have here, hunting down the white king centralized knights of course this knight can be captured but it will result in mate if knight takes e5 there would follow bishop f5 king h5 discover check and mate and one other variation and this is the the coolest one in my opinion is if the king went to h4 instead of capturing here we would have king g8 for a discover check not g7 we want to stay out of the line of fire king g8 discover check knight takes rook and how cool the finish would that one be bishop takes bishop for mate all minor pieces and a rook playing a very important role in this final position what a cool game this is and as a close I just want to draw your attention to some interesting uh, similarities I found between this game here that we just cycled through and the game of the century. Now, I'm not saying this game is a game of the century. You know, the game Bobby Fischer played as a 13-year-old in 1956. But I just want to point out some yeah, interesting similarities here. Uh, Bobby Fischer against Donald Byrne. Bobby Fischer was black, and the opening in this game was the Grunfeld defense. What variation? Three knights. That's one thing that uh, is in common. And another that caught my attention was this point right here. Notice all of these pieces. Uh, we had this configuration in uh, the game we just viewed with Ding Liren, and a multiple, you know, this little wasting of time, of moving a minor piece for a second time, a knight a4 move is also similar. Capturing on c3 in this game, and one of the most, uh, well, one of the biggest similarities is a queen sacrifice incoming right here. Queen is gone, and finally, a very nice king hunt. I guess you're getting a, a two games for one in this video. If you haven't seen the game of the century, this is how it followed. But uh, yeah, I just found it to be a uh, pretty similar, you know, in 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 many 
in many aspects. Finally, uh, this one actually goes straight to me, but uh, yeah, a really beautiful game in my opinion. Not uh, not this one here, not just this one, but uh, Ding Lirin, Mr. Uh, Wizard, I don't know. Should we be calling him that from now on? It's certainly a fantastic game. I love uh, seeing star games like that. Let me know, as usual, in the comment section below what your thoughts are. And I hope you enjoyed this video. That's all for now. Take care. Bye.